You're live. Hockey Nation fans, welcome back to the Hockey Nation live show with Cold French directly from the booth. And of course, the co host from the West Coast, Michael Devilano. Michael, welcome back in the booth today. Good morning, Frenchie. I'm excited because we're going to be talking about the LA Kings today. Yeah, it's a, a team really on where you at, honestly, in the same sure. state. And, uh, you know, a lot of transformation over there. They are uh, hanging there for the last couple of years. And then uh, with, uh, you know, Robitar, Blake around, and uh, I think they are in the right direction. You just have right. to be a little bit patient. But I can't wait to, from you to hear more about, uh, you know, the Kings and the new players they got, everything like that. And when you have Kopitar in the lineup, the helping for sure uh, for them uh, for the next couple of years. But uh, yeah. honestly, we have, like we do every single day, we go around the league, we check for the breaking news and update. And honestly, we have a breaking news about 35 minutes ago, the New York Rangers and uh, their winger, um, Ryan Strom, they um, have an agreement before they get... Uh, they are waiting, honestly, the airing from the salary arbitration. You say contract, um, exactly what we talked yesterday. I think you bring me, you bring to uh, like $4.6 million, if I think so, and then finally they have an agreement of $4.5 million for $9 million. It was exactly what we thought. Um, we asked 5.7. The Rangers came back with a 3.6. So it was a $2.1 million difference. And I think, you know, they, both of them, they are agree. And the most of the thing is like, they are, you know, hanging together, like, you know, hands to hands. They want to have, um, they, they need him, they want him. And the flip side, Ryan understand what is worth it. And then he <clears> gets <throat> something very good. Last season, he scored yeah. 18 goals, 49, uh, 41 assists for 59 points. It was yeah. the most for him, for the Rangers. Uh, play with Panarin, of course. And um, so I think it's a good signature for the Rangers. I think it's great. Um, and, you know, what the people forget is he scored 18 goals for them the year before. <laughs> so he, he's, he's consistently good. He's, it's a good signing. He's shown he can produce at a high level with Panarin. And he's good defensively. He's like a rare player where you don't have to, like, force him to play 200-foot game. And he's good on face-offs, so... Yeah, I agree with you about that. I think, you know I mean? Like he scored 30, uh, 33 points a year b before that. Um, it's really interesting. You know, he was a, a fifth overall pick by the Islanders in 2011. He played sure. with him for, you know, three, four, uh, three seasons before he got trade over there. And, you know, if you remember, he started very well at, at his rookie years. He's, yeah. you know, seven goal, 18 point, 37 game. And then he come back with a good season of 50 points. And unfortunately, his third season, he did not perform at the level where they expected, I believe. And then yeah. he prayed to the <laughs> to the Islander, uh, for, to the Oilers, Edmonton Oilers. And then over there, unfortunately, he did not also uh, do well over there. He have only 34 points, 82 game, but I think behind the door somewhere i don't know it was the year was maybe dallas Agans there or uh no, it was mcclellan but they he was playing him third line yeah like and they weren't moving nugent hopkins then to the wing so they yeah. had you know or they had you know mcdavid dry all dry was still kind of emerging but they were burying him on the third line if you look at his ice time and his productivity it was still very good Yep. And he was a good 200-foot player. And then Chiarelli makes this weird move. He had a prior relationship with Ryan Spooner, who was a good player, but he, it was obvious he's not at that level anymore. Like, Ryan at one point was a similar offensive production to the other, like Spooner to Strom. But Strom's a better player. I mean, Strom is showing. I'm glad he's got this opportunity. He could have done the same thing in Edmonton, frankly. Yep. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think you mentioned this to us yesterday. We talked about, you know, his A ring for today, but absolutely right. I think he should be get more. One thing it was like we did not mention about this. He got 17 points last season on power play. No, he's a good player. Like he can play in all situations. I think in Edmonton, he wasn't getting on power play. He was playing five on five. He was playing like 13 to 15 minutes a game. And he would kill penalties, I think, too. 
that will help him if he can reach the 20 gold per year. Yeah, I mean, he's never been there. He's yeah. always up a 17, 18, 18, 13, 13. He's a good playmaker, though. He, but he I, can score, but he's he's an unselfish player. He, he, you know, honestly, he, two years ago, that's the, maybe the only year he did not, like, he has less goal, uh, less assist to the goal, usually, but this year with Panarin. And again, like anybody else, right? Tell, you know, someone get points, tell me who he play with. Right, so you need you cannot do by yourself, right? At least you're yeah. Nick David or something. But you know, if you surround him with the right players, he's totally. going to produce, and that's what happening last season with the Rangers. And again, uh, he, the Rangers getting him a good contract for two years. And of course, after that, he's going to be on on UFA. But they have, I think, for both ways, like you know, Rangers maybe say, you know what, we will see what happening after two years, or for him yeah. say, you know what. I'm going to see what what you have on the market. Maybe I can get more if I have two good year with it. So at the end of the day, two great signature, good. good, good I hope, for they, him. I I hope really they continue to play him at second line center. Like he he's totally capable. The the issue will be Lafreniere is going to move up in the lineup. I think like so. Then the question is, what does that do to that lineup? Lafreniere is on the wing. I don't think it affects center. So it's it's good unless unless they move Kako to middle, which I don't think they will. You know, I think I can see Lafreniere moving up, and then maybe they move Kreider away, right? Like maybe they trade him. I, I you know I don't think so. They can do that. I think it will be maybe. I think it's 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 better better luck or whatever. Start also with Lafreniere. What's up? I think they will start a little bit slow with him too. Like they cannot, you know, what I mean, like they will a little bit protect Lafreniere. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You know what I mean? I um, wouldn't. <laughs> He's like a monster. <laughs> but, but my point to you is like they don't want to burn him right away. Like give him not sure. pretty good because they have already, uh, you know, uh, lots of firepower up there. Though. Yeah, so it, it makes sense. Like I don't say they're not, they're not, they're going to sell him. But my point to you is that the, you know what I mean? Like they have already uh, Zibanez, uh, Jad over there, right? And they have Puchinov. Uh, on the right, they have Cricker, uh, Greater over there, and Kako on that one over there. So you're right. I think Lafreniere is going to play left uh, a winger, but yeah. again, uh, they have to find him a spot on the top six. And the only one I can see right now is Buchnevich. Maybe, yeah, Buchnevich they like, but I think he's better. He's right now. <laughs> Lafreniere might be a top 25 player in the world. <laughs> like, he's older, right? He's a year older. And I think every time I under underestimate that guy, and like, I'll be honest with you. I was like, ah, maybe Quinton Byfield will go first. And then when I started watching him, I'm like, never mind. Like, this guy can play in the NHL. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, listen. He's better than Jack. He's better than Kako. He's going to get 60 points. Right. He over 70 points, 75 points. I'll be very impressed by him. He, um, won't, he won't get that next year, but he'll get 50, 60 points. Yeah. So that's, that's like McKinnon in his first year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, again, my point to you is not, you know what I mean? Like when you're a first round pick. Overall, uh, Michael, usually you go with a team where they don't have no yeah. foundation and no yeah. depth chart. And you say, you know what, buddy, go and play 20 minutes per game and learn and everything like that. But it's rare yeah. when you have a team like the Rangers where you listen, the top six players right now, they, they can play anywhere in the NHL. Totally. So he's not totally. only like, you know what I mean? Like, my yeah. point is what I said, Pratek or whatever it is, it's not like I don't want to diminish. If Skillet Helen is going no, to be no, a yeah. great hockey player, it's just like it's just like it's not like rare you see it, a player like him go to team and the uh the he can almost like hey, top six, you have to work hard to get there. Of course, you're going to have power play, of course, it's going to be you know, uh, eight, six, yeah. eight, seven, thing, eighteen minutes per game, but it's just like you know, like making them get there. Yeah, the the color revenge, I think they dropped three times and did not make the playoff back to back with. Back to back to back. With you know? McKinnon, yeah, yeah, but McKinnon, they were they were doing what you're saying. They were holding McKinnon back, and McKinnon was not figured out yet. McKinnon is like, he was almost too fast. 
<laughs> he, he was like so fast. Nobody could like, he couldn't put it all together because he was playing at Sidney Crosby speed. Right. And he had that intensity and you were, I would watch him and I'd be like, this guy's got to be like better, you know, like then I'm see cause I'm watching him. He's amazing. Right. So when he clicked, it wasn't surprising to me. Yeah. But it took a while for him. I think Lafreni is a little different player, right? Like he's so smart and he's so shifty and he finds seams and he can shoot in tight space. He does a lot of really special things. He's not McKinnon, but he's like a lowercase McKinnon. Exactly. <laughs> like McKinnon's, you know, took him a while to get there because of that. And plus they had, dude, they were so invested in Duchesne, which was crazy. They had Landis Cog. You know, they didn't really believe in Ryan or McKinnon where they, they weren't sure they were going to pan out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> O'Reilly was there and they're like, ah, oh, he's not worth the money. Let's trade him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. No, what, you know what I mean? Like, like I said. It was a weird circumstance. There, right? Yeah. Now, it, it's good for Strom. It's good for everyone. Just around the league now, we have only one more news. It's a signature, but two, two signature, but... One, I think, is a minor, is a two minor. One from Ottawa Senator. We talk about Christian uh, Jaros, uh, 750, one year, uh, the 24 years old uh, defenseman. I was going to uh, mention something about him. So yeah. His cousin apparently is Ed, is uh, Eric Cernak. Okay. But he's not related to the other, the goalie. And the second signature happening last night. Is the Edmonton Oilers sign William Lagesson? Yeah, I don't mind him. Um, he's, he's a one point five, just a one point forty five million dollars two years contract, seven twenty five. He played for the Bakersville um, and AHL contract. last season. He's right now alone in the Sweden uh, league at that moment. We're speaking. Th this guy's a little under the radar, but you know he could play. Like, he is not going to get you numbers. He's not offensive, but he's a very good defenseman. He's not an exceptional skater, but he's a good skater. He's got an active stick. He's not, you know, huge. He could be a five, six, seven, and be very reliable. So I always wonder why he hasn't popped up yet. Um, maybe it's because he's not flashy, you know. He's not a flashy D. But it's a good little signing. We'll see what happens with him. I mean, what do he get, 700 grand? 725, yeah, 144, yeah. 1.45 for two years. So he, that's that what he's doing here. He played eight games in the Edmonton all those last year. He scored less, minus four, play yeah. about 12 minutes per game. But no, right now he's, um, he's playing right now the Sweden Hockey uh, Alvinskin League, the SHAL. And in 11 games, he's already have nine points, three goals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, six assists and plus six ratings. So, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. he, he could, I think it's another one, like sometimes kid uh, play take a little bit longer, but at some yeah. point it's a good. Um, He's, uh, I mean, listen, I don't, I, I don't have any expectations for him offensively at the NHL level. You can see the difference between like the KHL took a lot of players the NHL takes a lot of players. The Swedish league has kind of diminished a little bit. It's still a very good professional league, but you yep. can see being on big ice and a little bit less talent that guys can rack up better numbers. So we don't want to get, you know, too excited about it. No, of course. Yeah, know. He, he, he's not the, the next Evan Bouchard over there. Definitely not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, be a couple of things going on around the management movement in the bank went front office. Remember like a couple of days ago, we mentioned about the, Retired player uh, Jason, um, who was the retired uh, Trevor D uh, Daly, right? Trevor Daly, yeah. Yeah, and now the um, the Pittsburgh Penguins have promote Patrick Alvin from the director of amateur scouting to assistant GM. Wow, uh, with Rutherford. Um, he's always been with the team since 2006 when he was an European scout. So then, so he said over 15 years works with the Penguins. So huh. that's the one that uh, other move in the Penguin organization. Sam Ventura, I don't know if you know him, will assume the role of director of hockey operation, and hockey research, uh, working closely with Alvin on the salary cap, CBA, and overall hockey operation budget. Eric Heasley will consist his role as a manager of hockey and op operation assistant GM for the WBS where they are, um, Warri Barry, uh, well, is it, what's the W like? 
built uh, their team, Barry's Skenton AHL team over there. Oh, Wilkes Barry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then just mention about the Rand Bullock contract. It's a surprise to everybody here. You remember he was a $5 million? Yeah. So they get, he's get only 3.34 this year and 6.66 for the following year. I mean, I think logically what role he plays, he will get a long term at five, six, right? Well, six, the point it made this, I'll be honest with you, is because the, the it, it, it's very smart. I, I really have closed yeah. them because the yeah. special Barzol contract is coming. Uh -huh. That gave them an extra 1.5, 1.8 million mm -hmm. more in their pocket. And then the following year, now they increase, but now you're going to lose maybe the the the, the people we talking yesterday, Bolcha, Andrew Lamb, and though and Kam, uh, Kamal, um, Kamarov. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they will be have more space next year. To let it go, some players, and then I his him at six points. Really smart. I, I like that idea here. Yeah, I mean, I think it gives them a good, a better average than six. It gives Ryan when he goes into the following year, if he has, if he's still restricted, which I, I don't know if he is, but would he be unrestricted after that or restricted? Uh, after two years, yeah, he should be UFA. That's what I thought because he's twenty six. And what it gives Ryan is negotiating power because then he says, listen, I'm at 6.2 and then the next contract will be longer. So that, yeah. that's, that's a benefit. So they obviously, it's a smart deal for them. I mean, I agree with you. No, this is really smart. Good move for both of them. Yeah. Uh, good stuff over there. I like it. I really like it. Uh, talking about uh, RFA, of course, we talk about Ryan Strom just got uh, a weeding. Uh, Brand Lemieux have an arbitration schedule. Um, That'll be uh, interesting. Friday, tomorrow, and he requ he asked for two million dollars, and the Rangers are back with uh, nine fifty and one point zero seventy five million dollars for the season, for the upcoming season. I really believe this will be. Honestly, I see this at one point two five. I was thinking. I I think it, I think you're right. That was the number in my head. His yep. dad's by his agent, right? Yep. Of course. His dad, I don't his dad's like a serious agent. Pepe. Pepe is like one of the I, I was shocked. Like he has he's like a top 10 or 15 agent as far as contracts under management. It's kind of shocking when you look at Puckpedia. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> but yeah, he's yeah, a big yeah, um, you know, I work with him. I'll be honest with you, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. I work with him and with Arizona Route Runner. And the uh, East Coast Hockey League in 2004, 5, and 6 when the team was owned by the Phoenix Suns. Um, and I was impressed by the way it was management people. I was, you know what I mean? Like, you know the music, like if you you watch him play hockey, me, I was in 12 years. Yeah, as a player, you kind of hated him, but. Right, they really hate him. It was the, the time with Lafontaine, everybody, like earlier before that, and it was the the night of the hags. Everybody else bring hags and we threw hags between both sides of the ring on the side of the ice during the then me was split with it. So anyways, that's another story. Yeah. Oh my but God. Good the day, you know what I mean? The, the, the play, we play hockey with Avalanche against Detroit and Montreal, Atford, and every time like that, right? Um, not many people likes him, but on the off side, and he was the manager that the GM over there, he was the time of the 2005 lockout, if you remember that, year and i was with them and they had the organized a uh, game alan may and they bring luke rubitar and it was all those time over there but the way he was management and manage and tackle with people i was really impressive um by the way he did that so i'm not yeah, surprised what you mentioned to me right now about that one over there i always see him in the rink like he's always at like He's very visible. He's always active watching players. Like he's a lot of, you know, people kind of gravitate to him a little bit. His, his lineup of players is interesting. Like he's got um, as an agent, just out of curiosity, Timo Meyer, Hampus Lindholm, Freddie Anderson, Rasmus Anderson, Patrick Nemeth. So he's got a lot of Swedish guys. Yeah. Because you work with a company from uh, Europe. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. So he started like a lower, like, you know what I mean? And then he got a promote and then he's getting like, he got those people after that. But yeah, he worked with a 
one or two people, but they, I remember they are coming from New, uh, I think Sweden or Finland yeah, or something like that. And a guy from Montreal also is involved with that. Mm -hmm. Got it. I mean, Meyer's not Swedish, but there, a lot of these guys are Swedish. Yeah. So he's got some good players. He doesn't have the top players, but they're all guys that are, you know, solid. Like they yeah. all make a contribution and. Talking about uh, another news, the, Mo uh, the Montreal, the Detroit Red Wing GM said the restriction uh, plus RFA forward Tim Tro Timashev, uh, considering all his options, resign with the Red Wing remains a possibility. Um, so we'll see what happened with this guy. Maybe he's looking to play back in KHL or something I like that. Do that Timashev, he's good, man. Well, they he played very well for them. He's got lots of speed. He's aggressive and he's got some skill i don't yeah. know why he wouldn't just keep remember him. he came from toronto if you yeah. um, follow him a little bit you know yeah. I mean? it, it's funny do you know where he's from uh, waiver a waiver uh no where ukraine oh yeah that makes sense <laughs> yeah he's, he's a really good player i don't know i like him i think i was you know in my head i'm like give this guy some a chance next year like he's He's a real good skater. He's stocky. He goes to scoring areas. Like I think he's got some skill. Yeah, but so maybe, we're maybe we're we're the the over uh, it's too bad. And maybe the last news we have have right now, maybe have something else. You heard something else, but the but two news. First, we did not talk about this yesterday because the news was get out late yesterday afternoon. Um, is the last? You know, yesterday we talked about Bishop. And uh, Ben Bishop and Tyler Segway for out for five months, maybe after surgery. To one is the knee, and another one is the hip. And then, obviously, um, Nick West from the Columbus Blue Jacket is going to be out at least a minimum of five to six months with a uh, surgery on his left shoulder. Um, so it's, it's a you know what I mean like we know what he brings. Or honestly, the Columbus was really not great on the offensive side you know what i mean the top six is not like you know and nick west was one of the top six right there's going to missing a lot from the blue jacket i believe that will maybe open the door to maybe looking for hoffman i mean he i think hoffman would fit really well in columbus obviously but it'll be interesting to see so he's going to be out for five six months and last and that last news I have right now, at least you have something else, is the the NHL, the NHL PA and EA Sports extend a multi-year deal for a couple more years. Um, oh, they did. Yep. So um, wait, it's really interesting because if, if you you know I mean follow the hockey very well and what EA Sport does for many other sport also, but they have a. Um, you know, he has always been with them for many, many years, and I think it's great. And they have an agreement. I don't know if you follow it, but they have a last year, October 26, October 16, um, they launched a worldwide uh, NHL 21, launched worldwide, um, you know, two weeks ago for cool. PlayStation and X, X, Xbox One. Join the ES Sport community on Facebook, Instagram, or follow the Twitter. For more information about ES Sport, for the key behind this, they're launching the new one right there. And um, that'd be yeah. another thing. The NHL 94 Rewind launch October 30, 2020, if you're looking for old stuff. So it's, you know, I'm not like a big guy on the on the game, I mean, but I think it's good. it's good for see that where the, you know, rewind, NHL 94 Rewind, Rewind. It's pretty an amazing to do that. So it's good for them. It's good for I always said marketing NHL should be everywhere to get more, promote more. And um, that's good to have a you know an agreement with ES Sport where the game is getting more and more on Twitch. And uh, you know, what I mean, like I believe the next 10 years you're going to have a professional player make million dollars on gaming the next five years. Probably. Like what in the NHL? On either sport. <laughs> They go, those guys make a lot more than a million dollars. They make – it's the biggest sport next to football. In Mr. the UK, uh, Do you know – do you follow Gary Vee? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. So Gary Vee just owned a team from Minnesota, the Rock Rock something, and then I said 
what, what, you know what I mean? I thought it was like a, a football indoor. No, it's an e-sports you know, team. I, was, I thought it was a, a sport, like, you know what I mean? Like a soccer inside indoor. And then yeah. I said, wait a minute. That's not, it's, so they build team right now. Seven, oh, eight. No, it's huge here. So I don't, I don't know if you know, but okay. So if you look at the number of fans per sport in the United States, the, the number one sport is football and there's 130 million fans. The number two sport is esports. It's 105, and then you've got baseball at 90. You got NBA at about 60, and you got NHL at about 45. So it's it's the second biggest sport in the U.S. Soccer is like 10 or 12. The MLS. So it, they make a lot of money. Like they make money on Twitch. Twitch is owned by Amazon. So the streaming that they have on their own channels, they make a lot of money. And then YouTube as well, but YouTube's been really, you know, terrible for censorship and weird stuff. But Twitch, they make a lot of dough. The esports teams are weird because it's okay. Imagine you're the NHL, right? And then you got the players and you got the franchise owner, right? Well, they got an extra element, which is the game. So they have the players, they have the franchise owner, but then they have the game. So the, the, there's an extra slice in there plus the stadium and all that stuff, right? So that slice of the game is kind of takes a lot of money out of it. So it's a little bit challenging when you own an esports team, but it's still there's it's huge. Like it's just big, and yeah. worldwide it's like the second biggest sport in the world next to soccer. Yeah, it's very interesting about this. You know what I mean? Like if you young age, you know, 14, 15, you want to become a professional, make a ton of money. If you net, cannot make the NHL, you can make the gaming site. And you, you absolutely can. Like people laugh at it and they criticize people, but guys aren't stupid like guys if you look at university enrollment in the states it's now 60 40 women so where are the guys they're rejecting debt and they're going and they laugh and they say oh they're playing video games I'm like yeah they're making money on video games yeah yeah, it's pretty interesting about that. You know, I mean, I was just opening the door about this, that agreement. So yeah, that's, um, it's that's amazing stuff over there. And now, you know, we hit the half of the show. It's time to show you up with a preview. We are on the marathon of 31 days, 31 different teams. And today we talk about a team on the West Coast, the Los Angeles King um, with uh, the president, Rob Blake, uh, Luke Robdahl, GM Rob Blake. And, of course, the King are... Uh, it was 2013 the last time they win. Is it 15 or 13? 15. I, I thought the, the Chicago was 15, 13. And right here. Kings last, because they won 2012, right? Let's look. It's out of my. Uh, 2012. I can't remember the last cup. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah they won 93 they did not uh tw 12 and 14 and then 15 was chicago so 2012 2014 so it's been six years yeah because it was a back to back to back like yeah, you know back -back, chicago, yeah. la chicago yeah, la crazy yeah and boston between them at the beginning of 11 they got one in there with tim thomas <laughs> yeah um, so I think, I think that they were trying and trying to plug holes and they had to Foley and they had Tanner Pearson and they still have Brown and they have Carter and, you know, Mike Richards flamed out and those guys were all key to the cup wins and they were just trying to hang on to guys. Like we see Alex Martinez left. Um, we saw Jake Muzzin go to Toronto. So you started to see that there was a change when Luke Robitaille took over and Rob Blake is the GM. And they brought in Todd McClellan, which I thought was a really smart move from Edmonton. He's a veteran NHL coach. He's coached in Detroit, coached in San Jose, coached in Edmonton. He's a, he's a real good coach. He prepares the team. He's aggressive. Um, they still have Doughty and Kopitar. You know, the miles are adding up a little bit on Doughty. Is he still plays too many minutes. Like 26 minutes a game for him is probably too much at this point. He'd be better at 23 which sounds like, you know, not a big change, but it'd be huge over the course of a year. Kopitar's still a very high-end player. He's not, but the game's changed a little bit, right, Pierre? Like, it's it's benefiting guys that are faster, and Kopitar's very, um, how do you say it, north-south? Yeah. But he can 
loses points and he wins faceoffs and he's a big man in the middle, he's still a legit number one centerman. But then bring in Blake and Robitaille and they go, listen, we're just going to strip down everything around these two guys and we're going to build up with some talent. So they draft Gabe Velarde. Velarde has a lot of back issues, which is really strange out of junior. Nobody knows what's going on. It looks like his career is really in jeopardy. And things don't look good. So they're, they're shedding assets. They let Pearson go. They let Toffoli finally go. The defense looks real thin. But then what we saw is, you know, it's like you let, number one, that gets them high draft picks. So they've drafted very well. Um, although, well, the one player I don't like. But so last year they drafted Alex Turcotte. He looks like a legitimate number one, number two centerman. <clears throat> and he's a 200-foot player. He's the son of Alfie Turcotte, who played – um, obviously in the NHL for Montreal a little bit and a little bit in Washington. His uh, uncle is Jeff Turcotte, who is actually in the Kings organization as a, uh, a junior Kings coach and development coach. And his grandfather is the godfather of stick handling schools, <laughs> which is Real Turcotte. Uh, is, is that his grandfather? Yeah, I guess it is, right? Um, and then, so last year then they, you know, they drafted Tobias Bjorn Flott, but they have a whole bunch of other prospects. They draft Alex Kaliev, who is a high goal scoring player, Russian player in the OHL. I don't like him. His work ethic is terrible, and he has apparently a horrible, horrible attitude. But they do sign him, and then they get the jewel. They get Quinton Byfield as the second overall pick this year. And by all accounts, and you know, I think this is a player that'll take a little bit of time. He's one of the youngest players, or if not the youngest player in the NHL draft, but he's a six foot four, highly skilled centerman. He has an NHL shot. And it's really exciting to see. You've also seen that a lot of the, um, you know, the athletes of color in the city, including Magic Johnson, recognize that he's the highest drafted, um, you know, black athlete in the NHL at this point. And they've all reached out to him publicly. It's really kind of nice to see how they've embraced him. Hopefully it doesn't go to his head. He is a very, he seems like a very level-headed kid. He always dresses with a bow tie, but he, he is a big piece to this future. Um, I don't know what that word is. I feel like him, like a little bit like the Zeph Jones. Um, it takes some time, <laughs> right? Like he's got that same body as Seth Jones, where he's long and kind of leanish. He's strong and he's skilled, but it took Seth a little bit of time, right? That's normal at that young age to grow. Yeah. And they get big at this young age. I think yeah. so. He's going to get better. He's going to improve. Exactly. His speed. You tell that. Um, There's you know. no patient with him. I think, un like Lafreniere, if you compare the two, to me, one guy's the youngest guy in the draft, and the other guy's like the oldest guy in the draft. So yep. there's a time difference that Lafreniere has the benefit of. And you saw that in the World Juniors where Quinton really struggled to contribute. Whereas Lafreniere was like, when he was he got hurt and he came back and it was like, Whoa, like this guy thinks the game at a high speed and does things to create opportunity. And he's there, but you know, a year before that, he probably, he wasn't like that. So I think you're going to see the same thing with Quinton. It wouldn't hurt him to go back and play in junior, but there may not be junior. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith that he should go back to the OHL. I think he's done what he can do there. Um, I just don't know what you do with them. You know, they might just need a year of mentorship on the NHL and then, slowly move him up wouldn't hurt him to play a little bit with Kopitar you know but they have lots of other prospects they made the trade for Olimata last year what was interesting was you saw four players um, emerge that can really play on defense you saw three of them Walker Roy and Anderson and it, it looks pretty dismal on paper if you don't know them but when you watch them you're like oh these guys can play <laughs> so all these guys are actually good NHL defensemen are they number two, three defensemen? I don't think so. I think that they're probably more like three, four, five, or four, five, six. So they will want to add another defenseman in there. And they think they did that with Mata. I think realistically Mata is a three, four. But, you know, they, they're getting there. They're not very far away. Bjorn Fott could be a top two, but I think he's more like a three to me. So they probably have room for one more guy to help out Kopitar. But all of it's positive. Uh, Cal Peterson and Nett. His numbers are otherworldly, and if you watch him, he's very technically sound. He's got a similar build to Jonathan Quick, but a better style, and I think he's more dedicated off ice. 
which is, you know, I think caught up to quick where he's older now. The injuries have added up because his, he's not really dedicated necessarily physically to training. He's always got buy on talent and intuition. Um, so you saw injuries start creeping in. It was bad. But I think Quick can still contribute at the NHL level. I, don't, I think he's still capable. But Cal Peterson, I think, in, increasingly looks like he could be a number one. I guess that's to be determined. If you look at the other layer of prospects, Gabe Velarde looks like the player they drafted. He came back. He's six foot three, smart centerman, good playmaker, offensively dangerous. Uh, Martin Furk, who was a reclamation project from Detroit, if you've watched him, you know he has an probably one of the best shots in the NHL. The problem is away from the puck. And away from the puck, he's a disaster for a lot of coaches, and they just can't handle it. It's kind of like the Andreas Athanasiu issue. So I think he went down to the AHL, he paid attention to his defense, and when he came up, he showed, again, he can score. And that velarde firk combination gives them a legit second line. Can he do it over 80 NHL games? I do not know. They look like it based on last year, but we will find out. That is still to be determined. But skill-wise, Martin Firk, and you I don't know if you – did you watch him in the Quebec League? Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, he's another he's one way he's like – and upside down, right? No, upside down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so, uh, <laughs> not a bad way, but I think he he, exactly. I think that's that's the way I see him right now. So, would be interesting how, you know, how the Kings believe on him and give a lot of chance uh, about that part of there. So, uh, I agree. I I think it'll be you know that there is potential there. I don't know if. I like to see it work out because in Detroit, I thought they gave up on him too early and he was very, very like, he's dangerous. Like when he shoots the puck, it's as good as any player I've seen yep. away from that. It, it's horrible. <laughs> um, but they have, they have other prospects. They have Jarrett Anderson Dolan, who's very good. They have Akil Thomas. They have Carl Grundstrom that came over in the Jake Muzzin deal from Toronto Blake Lizotte is not my favorite player, but he did play very well last year. And he projects like if they give him ice time, he could get a lot more points. He's a very fast skater, but he's very small. And he is smart. Um, I don't. I think he gets pushed out very fast, though, with Turcotte, Kopitar, and Velarde down the middle. I just don't think he's a good winger either. But maybe, you know, I think that'll be a guy that'll it'll be hurt by the emergence of these young guys. And then you add in Quinton Byfield to the mix and – I think they probably start Byfield on the wing, but we'll see. I mean, I'm not the coach, so we'll see what happens. Um, the other Anderson here is the guy that – Leas Anderson, who was a high draft pick by the Rangers. I think he was drafted way too high, um, but he is good at what he is good. And they they here's an example of what you were saying before where you protect a player so that he has upside. They didn't protect this player, and his offensive game has totally been stunted by his defensive game. And I don't know if he can recover it. And he was drafted way too high on top of it and rushed to the NHL for no reason. Because he, what he does is good. Like, he could be a very good third-line center. But now I don't see him being a top six. Um, Samuel Fegamo, I did not like him last year in the rookie tournament here in Anaheim. However, uh, we saw it at the World Juniors. We see it in Europe. He can score. He, he can play. Um I did not like him away from the puck. He f Sometimes, as you know, Pierre, when you get a goal-scoring guy, they float, and they're looking for space all the time. And I feel like he needs to understand how not to float because you can't do that at the NHL level. So he, if he can figure that out, he could be a really good prospect. I don't think he's ready, though. I think he's probably another year or two away. The other guy that is ready probably is Kupari, and Kupari was a pretty high draft pick by them. He is a Finnish player. He is fast, and he can play. I just don't know where he fits on this team. Like on this roster, I'm not sure, you know, does he push out Elias Anderson? He could. Uh, does he, you know, if they move Jeff Carter, he could fit in. Or if, if Dustin Brown drops down the lineup, I, Alex Iafolo, he showed he can play in a top line. I think he's better as a second line winger, but he's very fast and pretty skilled and can score and stocky. I like Grundstrom coming in. They signed Austin Wagner. He looks like he has more offense, but, you know, at the very least, he's a good bottom six. Trevor Moore came over from Toronto, and he's really good. He's a California kid. I thought he played very well for them. He's got some size and grit. 
and he can score a little bit. Adrian Kempe, I don't know. If, if Adrian Kempe doesn't play the way he did in the second half and he plays more like he did in the first half, then he's gone. I mean, there's just too much talent coming up. He's got talent, but if he's not engaged in the play and producing, then – you know, you lose interest in him really fast. No, he played 250 games in the NHL. You're just waiting and waiting for him to be a – he looks like he should be a second-line center, but he just doesn't pull it off, you know? <laughs> yep. It's a little frustrating to watch, but he did look good the second half, so, you know, maybe it was just too much for him. I guess we'll see. He needs to start fast, though. Oli Mata came over for in the trade with uh, Chicago, right? Um, he'll be a good help player to help out Drew Doughty. Matt Roy played very well last year, as did Mikey Anderson. We talked about Mikey Anderson's brother who just re-signed in Toronto and came over in the New Jersey trade. Mikey Anderson looks like he's, uh, to me, he's more like a five, but he can play in the NHL. Sean Walker looked very good last year. Curtis McDermott's kind of a little bit of a throwback defenseman. He's tough. He's, you're not going to get a lot of offense out of him, but he's a tough, strong guy. I project him more as a 6'7". What would really help them is having another top prospect on D. It could be Tobias Bjornfot. He looks like he can play in the NHL. He's a little slight. I think they need to be patient with him so he doesn't you know, get rushed. Um, but he can play. I mean, he's better than Mikey Anderson. So I think he could play second pairing. Uh, but they may protect him. You know, they might just keep him in the AHL, and you're not in a big rush to get him up there. If you look at the cap situation, they're in pretty good shape. <laughs> um, so they've shed a lot of salary. They do have two huge contracts with Kopitar and Doughty. However, otherwise, they're fairly favorable. You can project where in a couple years or if they decide to buy or move these guys, Jeff Carter and Dustin Brown. Dustin Brown can still play. Jeff Carter can still play, but they're older and they're not what they once were. And Kopitar is not getting any younger. I don't think his game's diminishing. However, surrounding those guys with young players is a smart thing. Alex Iafolo needs to be resigned for next year or let him go. I think he can go either way. He is capable of getting you 20 goals. Adrian Kempe, we talked about. I think it's like he's got to do it or he's gone. Wagner is a good signing. Lizotte's a good contributor. Velarde is the future. Quinton Byfield is the future. Turcotte is the future and not the distant future. These guys can all play now. What they can produce, Velarde's ahead of the other guys. He showed last year that he hasn't really lost a step after all the back problems where he looked like his career is in jeopardy. He is, to me, if he is healthy, a legitimate number two center that could project as a number one, which is interesting because nobody's talking about that. But if you watch him, he is like, He's a really talented player, and he's dangerous, and he doesn't take shifts off, and he's big. So if he can continue to play like that, then they've got a 55, 65-point player probably this year. Uh, Drew Doughty's still very good, but you know he's he's a little younger than Kopitar, but he needs some help back there. He can't play 26, 28 minutes a game. He was lucky okay to get $11 million. I, I think he's still capable, but that's a huge contract. I mean, he... He is the star there still, but he's overplayed and you're seeing it wear out on him. Like, and I don't think he's, you know, when I, <laughs> I, this is how old I am. I scouted him in the OHL in his draft year. And I was like, wow, are you guys sure about this guy? He was an overage defenseman. I'm like, he's pretty fat. <laughs> now to his credit, he came to the NHL. They whipped him into shape. And, but I, I don't think he's always in the best shape. And I think that you know, he, playing, he had like 60 points, 45 points, 35 points. Yeah, he, he's still capable, but he's got to be in better shape to do that. And he can't play 26 minutes a game. It's just like he got a lot of money for what he, he, he did. Yeah. I, I think the off season or the, his off season is catching up to him and the amount of miles he has is catching up to him, but it's not like permanent. If, if they had a number two guy, or a second pairing that could legitimately play 20 minutes, that would really benefit Drew Doughty. And if he worked his butt off on the offseason, which I'm not sure, I don't know firsthand, but you can see he's not as chiseled as he was earlier. Yeah, he signed this at the right time. He signed a year prior this year, so he yeah. got like $88 million for $88 million. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
normally he should get about nine million dollars to be in a city. I, I agree with you. He would be he would be much more palatable at nine. Yep. Um, if you look at the prospects, we kind of talked about it. You mentioned this other guy, like this year they got Byfield. Helga Grands looks like a very good prospect. Um, Brock Faber was, he came over, which trade was that? Was that the, um, I can't remember where that pick came from. But that, I mean, that that worked out very well for them, the Brock Faber pick. I think that's a real good prospect. Um you love Turkai. You got to love Bjorn Fott. I do not believe in Kaliev, but he might play because he's just got so much ability to score goals. But, you know, he's going to learn really fast. The culture in L.A. will be, I don't, well, it's hard to say. It can be laid back, but it can also be hardworking. So maybe he fits in. But I, I think that they're going to want him to not, he can't be an attitude case. Nobody's going to put up with that. You know, he had real problems in Hamilton that were documented pretty well. Like, he dropped in the draft for a reason. Otherwise, this guy would have been a top 10 pick. Um, Fagamo, as I mentioned, I didn't love him, but he's pretty good. And actually, Jordan Spence is pretty good. And um, the goalie they like, I don't know, but I don't know much about him. Um, Kupari looks like he's ready. Akil Thomas is maybe, you know, he'll split time. This other guy, Aiden Dudas, I don't know if you've watched him. He's an interesting player. I just don't know if he'll find a spot on the team, you know, but he's a really smaller, talented player. Like he's pretty good. And then you still got Jared Anderson Dolan who should play in the NHL next year. So I don't know. They've done a real good job in the last, you know, one, two, three, four drafts. They've stocked up. Yeah. I want to mention to you a couple of things. First of all, they have to pay Darian Fanner for another $4 million this year. Uh, and then one million, one million. Yeah, Dion for now. Then they have to pay uh, Mike Richard seven hundred thousand, and then this year they have to pay uh, a Chuck for six point two million. Oh my God! So I they know. have they have eleven million dollars right now yeah. tied up coming season for three players. They are on the beach for the next the rest of their life. Do you think Kovalchuk will play? Uh, Why? Well, yeah, of course he, he's right here. He's skating. He skates at the ring right now. Um, in Florida. Yeah, he's late. he's in Florida during the COVID. So um, I'll be not surprised if he signed with the Panthers, but yeah. I could be wrong. That would so, be interesting. I mean, he he was terrible in LA. I think he was partially misused. They had um, the, the John Stevens was the coach, and I feel like. He was so stuck in the Daryl Sutter mode that it really hurt them. And they, he got you know let go because of that. And then they brought in uh, Willie Desjardins, and the players did not buy into that, which, you know, Willie's just too soft for that group. And it, you could tell he was temporary. So it was, it, was, it was not a good start. And Kovalchuk is a weird player. Like, he has all the size and talent and training in the world, but he's got a weird kind of attitude, right? Um, but again, he's not like you know 18 anymore. He's 36, 37. Yeah. So the, the 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 baggage experience is there, but the, the, yeah. the, the it, he looks like a younger man, and he has a lot of skill. So I don't know if that plays into it. I think what you saw here was they were playing him on the point and the power play, and it was horrible. And he danced around the outside a lot. You expect him to be more like a guy that is either a setup where he's getting shots. Left side, you have to be on his left, left side, not the right side, right? Yep. So I, I think there was always that battle. Um, so he was just poorly used, I think, when he was here. And I don't think he can be your top guy. And they were looking at him as being a huge piece of it. And it really messed things up. It was kind of the last days of the older guys because of that. So he want to play hockey. You can get him for yeah. one million dollars right now. Yeah. You can be on the third line, like the Flurry Panthers looking for someone just to pick it up and do play on the power play, which I think will be a good pick for the Florida Panthers. No, yeah, I kind of debate because I think he's in the house here. He was going to finish his days here. You know what I mean? So a lot of different things, I think it will be a good pick for Florida. What will happen? But I want to mention like this, like, you know, the good team have, um, it's like a phase, right? You you go high, then you win the Stanley Cup. You try yeah. maybe hanging there for one more year, two more years, and then you go down, right? And then now you are down, you have to pick it up. What I mentioned to you is this part over there. During the time, it was really good. So during the time, what, 13, 14, and everything like that, right? Yeah. Um, and 13, they never pick the first round. No. Second, 
and 14. They pick only in 29, 29, right? So they yeah. get Andrew and Kempe. But when you get 25, 29, it, it, it's one chance on two, right? So you don't have like a big prospect with there. Now they pick after that. They try to win, so they get a, a, a good they trade on the deadline and 15, and then they have no pick. So they totally. get away their pick, and now they get only 43. And 16, same thing. They get only 51. Their first pick of the draft, it was second yeah. round. And then mm -hmm. they drop down, and then it's coming now. It was look up down, jump on the team, and then you can see the shift. So they start to sailing and to understand and 17, they have to get some move. If you know that now they get they get a first round pick first time and the bottom 15, and there was 11, they get a Villardi. Gabriel Villardi is coming for the Windsor Spitfire. OHL, um, I think he is a good prospect. But now you can see in 18, they get 20. They get Kupiri. I don't know him a lot. I don't know if He's you know okay. him. He played in Lika. He was a number 20 overall. But he checked 19. They get 5. They get 22. They get 33. And they get 50. And then I got Fakemo, Kaliev, Borch, uh, Borch, Fot, and then Alex Surkat. Yep. You, you have right now five player, four players. I believe two of them, maybe three of them, can make the NHL and become something solid. Then this year, they get two of them. They get uh, uh, Byfield, number two, and then the MLG Grants, number 35, and 45, Brock Faber. Um, so you can see now the shifting. So they, yeah. they go with the veterans like Quick, uh, Trudy, and then Kupidar. And yeah. now going to hang in two more years, maybe one or two more years with Carter and uh, Dustin Brown to keep that, you know, that that experience with the youngest one. And then I don't be surprised they bring a lot of young players this year on the bottom because I think they have like uh, Thomas, you said earlier. Kill Thomas is good. I think that would be a good one over there. But I think under two, 216 draft, they don't have really – Great hockey player, or the no. one make this is maybe it all never play. turned out. They Isomot's not doing anything, they traded yeah. away their first, so. so you can see the shift, the shift, the direction they go a little bit like Ottawa, a little bit like the 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 Detroit Ranger. Uh, Detroit did also the Rangers did two years ago, but they have still, I believe, the Rangers never been a an rebuild team because they still have their the the. The core there, they would, you know, they have a still have long quiz, they have a uh, greater over there, and they get those still three, five, six plus. So the king or more, the team really low. You have to be two more years. I agree. Be a bit with the king, like the 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 Red Wings, like the Ottawa Senators. They're probably ahead of the Red Wings by a lot. They, because the reality is, Kopitar can still play, Doughty can still play. I agree with you. I agree with you. But then, they, but then, they Turcott, then, but the Velarde thing, it looked like that was a wasted pick because he just missed so much time because of the back injury. And now, if like that's why I say, like, he's the X factor. If he can play 80 games the way he did last year, holy crap, <laughs> you got a great player, you know, like, like he can, he can step in and Turcott can step in. So it'll be interesting. They're probably like two years ahead of Detroit. I would not be surprised if rate maybe one of the two veterans. Like Carter, but I think Carter. they would love to trade Carter, I believe. And I, I think that they'll let Brownie retire there. Um, but I, agree I, can, with you. I, I think do, Carter I would, would love to make that not on the protection. I think Jonathan Quick could become someone at track, a good team looking for maybe for a goalie. Yeah, I agree. They would maybe well, get two prospects. I don't know, man. I, you know, Quick, it'll be interesting to see because the, there's a lot of loyalty to him. I don't see them trading quick Dowdy or Kopi. Um, I oh, think all the three you mentioned, quick is the first one can go. I don't know if they'll do that. I'm not sure if they will. I I I think it's it would be it wouldn't be a bad move. Um, they really believe in Peterson, and I don't know what else they have coming up. But Peterson looks good. They like they. I don't like Ingram. Like Connor Ingram to me doesn't look like an NHL number one or two to me, but maybe he is. You know, he's a big goalie, but I think he struggled. Um, I don't know. The only good thing about Quick is this part. 
His contract not affect too much. No, it's good. Yeah. The contract's like totally reasonable. He five point eight million dollars is thirty four. It's going to be thirty seven eight yeah. at the end of this three years. And at six million dollars for who he is, they don't going to find a lot of goalie like him. No, that, that's the that's why I don't. I think they ride it out with him, um, and maybe he just becomes more of a backup to stay healthy. But you know, his fate is in his own hands. He showed at the end of the year he can play at a high level. When they moved out Jack Campbell, he was capable of playing at a high level. His problem is, to me, his health. And his health, I think, is directly tied to the style he plays and his physical conditioning. Yep. And you're totally right. around. It can't be, it can't be about, you know, they used to say about him, he's all about chewing chaw and winning cups. <laughs> Okay, but there's a training element you can't, and the in, implication being you didn't care about training, right? But you have to remember the last two seasons, right? He didn't have a great season, but you have to look also who is going to play, who play with him. For sure. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, 46 games, 42, you have 3.38, you have a yeah. bad year at 0.888, and then you last year played 42 games and 60, 70. So he could be maybe 50 games at 2.79, but look the team you have in front, but he still have 0.9904. But prior to that, for 10, yeah. 10 years or nine years, he was the one of the best top five goalies. Great, great numbers, you know? So I, I think I think if he's healthy and yep. they can keep him to 40 games or somewhere around there, then he's totally good. You know, yep. there's not too many goalies like that. And he can retire an LA King, which is what should happen. Like, yep. So that, it's a good, great. It's, I love, just love those. Oh, I got to jump, but right. Maybe <laughs> me too. So it's great stuff. Thanks again, everybody, to be around here. Thanks, Michael, to bring the lessons. King. I think tomorrow we have, um, we start with the M. Yeah. Right? Well, I can't remember have, if it's like Minnesota or? I think it's Minnesota. I don't see anything else. Then Montreal's coming soon after that. So that'd be great. Everybody, Sam. have a good thing Thursday. Any news, breaking news we have, we're going to come back. If not, see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Have an amazing Thursday, everybody.